Oh hey, it's Wes, and today is a very special day, because it's time to talk about the Fisher-Price CDK-39. Let's get into it. The Fisher-Price CDK-39 is a fixed-lens, compact, rangefinder-style camera. It has an all-plastic construction, fairly ruggedized, and is designed as more of a beginner's camera. Although, as we can see from some of the coming image samples, it is possible to take some pretty nice pictures with it. It's not a real camera! Now, some people might say that because a camera doesn't have a flappy mirror in it, it's not a DSLR, it's not a real camera. But, let's get with the times here and learn about the CDK-39. Let's start with build quality. First of all, as I said, it is all plastic. The plastic does seem a little bit cheap, although it has held up pretty well. This is going to be a long-term review as we've had this in our household for over a year now and has seen extensive use. If you look very closely, lacks O-rings and weather sealing. However, it appears to be like a Sony camera, nonetheless water and splash resistant and doesn't seem to be bothered too much by weather. It is a shockproof, crush-proof design. It can take a lot of hits and keep on working. Unfortunately, the paint and the decals on the camera do not seem to be very durable. This is where the Fisher-Price logo used to be, but it has since rubbed off with time and cleaning. And some of the labels are a little worse for wear after a few years. And also the uh, buttons and mechanisms on the camera. They aren't very firm, they're a little bit loose. And so overall, although it is durable, I can only give this a 6 out of 10 on build quality. Handling. I have to admit that I'm not the primary user of this camera, so I'm going to have to hand this off to Judah to review the, the handling of this camera because he is more familiar with it. Here we go. Oh no! Okay. And how easy are the buttons and dials to manipulate? <laughs> Do you have any difficulty with the fact that there is actually no screen on this camera, but actually just an embossed image? Okay. And the pop-up flash, does that work well for you? Alright, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you have it. Handling. Judah gives this a solid 9 out of 10. He loves the way this camera works. Image quality. We're going to go through a few more image samples on this. We've got a 24 megapixel sensor with a fixed 28 millimeter lens. So this is similar to a Leica Q, Fuji X100F, or a Fuji XF10 in this regard. It's kind of a walkabout camera. You're not going to get a lot of zoom range, a lot of variability on this. But as you can see, for family use and everyday stuff, it is fairly good quality. I mean, let's face it, it's all about the photographer, not so much about the camera. Image quality, for the price, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, it's a solid 8 out of 10. Cannot fault that for the value of this camera. Feature set. This is where things are pretty interesting with this camera. This actually has voice features, much like the old, long discontinued Minolta AFS-V talker. We have two volume levels. It actually has a function built in to alert your subjects that you are about to take a picture. Pretty useful. You don't get any uh, half-closed eyes, reduces red eye, you get better smiles that way. As you can see, it's easy to turn the camera on and off just by releasing the very friendly built-in flash. <clears throat> very nice, very pleasing. Also, you see there is a built-in selfie mirror. Now, I don't understand why all these camera manufacturers have trouble coming out with flip screens and mechanisms. You've got uh, monitors that you mount on the cameras. Fisher-Price already has this figured out. There's a mirror on the front of the camera. You point it at yourself, you see where it's aimed. Boom. Right in the frame, you got it. Also, it does not have dual card slots. As a matter of fact, it doesn't have any card slots. So that's a bit of an issue. Again though, built-in pop-up flash. Disappears right into the camera, easy peasy. Overall though, we're missing some features, so 5 out of 10 for feature set. 
value. Once again, I'm less familiar with this camera, so I'm going to hand this back to Judah to do some numbers on the value. Wow, that is incredible. All that for $9.99, I mean, we're missing a few features, but this is thousands of dollars less than its direct competition. I don't even know how that's possible. Because it's not a real camera. <sighs> there may be naysayers, but overall, we've got a 38 out of 50. That's a pretty solid score for this value starter camera. If you have any more questions about this camera, any suggestions for upcoming reviews, let me know. Down in the comments, I'll get back to you. Any questions for Judah? Want to uh, ask him to run some numbers for you or review one of your cameras? Let us know down in the comments. I'll show it to him. So, until next time, go take some photos.